in this example, we, we have what might look like a nightmare of a function. We have a for loop that has this strange n over i quantity appearing. So let's see how this affects stuff. The cost of the stuff inside of the for loop is constant. The cost of all of the code inside of the while loop, that for loop runs n over i times. So the cost of all of the code there in orange is cn over i. To understand what's happening with the while loop, we're going to need to make a trace table or an iteration table. So we have an iteration. And the value of the loop value of the loop variable for the while loop, which is i. i starts at 1. It then gets multiplied by 2, then gets multiplied by 2 again. After k iterations, we have 2 to the k. When does this stop? Well, it stops when the value of i, which is 2 to the k, is equal to the stopping condition of the while loop. Take a log base 2 of both sides, and we have k is equal to log base 2 of n. So the outer while loop iterates log base 2 of n times. As we've seen before, when analyzing while loops with other loops embedded inside of them, it can be helpful just to plug in the values that the loop variable for the while loop takes and see where that leads us. So t of n is equal to cn over i. The first value of i is 1, so it's cn plus cn over 2. That's the next value of i, plus cn over 4, plus all the way down until the last value of i, which is n. Let's factor out the largest value of the summation. It equals cn times 1 plus a half plus a fourth plus all the way down until 1 over n. Let's bound this above. To bound it above, we're going to bound it above by an infinite geometric series because it is a finite geometric series. Th that converges to 1 over 1 minus the common ratio. That simplifies to 1 over 1 minus a half. That's just 2. So it's 2cn. To bound this below, what we're going to do is keep the first term of the summation. And that's it. So it's bounded above by 2cn, bounded below by cn, therefore it must be in theta of n. So t of n is in theta of n. This shows that it's possible to get these sort of summations while having a for loop inside of a while loop. It's not necessarily just while loops inside of while loops.